created for this uh, Hamlet uh, program, and it's immaterial to me. I can make it five minutes to two hours. <laughs> I don't want anybody to continue the program. been moved and seconded that we proceed with the program as planned. I think I see it here. Well, thank you for your patience. Uh, Miss Hammett did call me, uh, talk to me one day this week, and I told her if I could talk off the cuff, so to speak, I would be happy to do it. And since the thing, as she indicated, is the development of nursing, I thought I might do an overall survey of nursing and look at it in terms of whether nursing exists in a vacuum or is it what it is because of certain um, things that happen uh, in the world at a particular time. The first <coughs> slide that I'm going to put on here is from Doc and Stuart. Short history of nursing. And I nearly do this to show you how nursing in quantity and quality rose gradually from the pre-Christian era into the beginning of the first century following Christ. And then we had a plateau. And then long about the 13th century, there was another slight increase and long about the 17th century, a very steep decline in nursing. And then in the 19th century, uh, it began to go up, and we think it's been going up ever since. Now, what is the purpose of the rise and the fall and the plateau? Uh, did it just happen? Uh, did we not have people interested in nursing at that time? Or, or what caused the rise and the dips and the plateaus uh, in nursing? Well, you have an answer. Also in this same book, there are a number of pages in the back that tell us, and I don't know whether this will show up, if it does, it will turn on the light. I have a that. Because it wasn't proved for a thousand years after. But he set out to prove. 
that disease was not caused by evil spurts, that there was some physiological reason. And it took medicine a thousand years to prove this, but Socrates, or uh, Hippocrates, believed it to insect. Then, when we get into uh, the Christian era, well, we had a slight rise in at least the holding of the plateau. We get into the military influence of nursing. And we have such orders as the Knights of St. John, which exist down to this day, if you press the button. Um, through England a number of years ago on a very rainy day, we got to this small town, which is known because it has in it the only three-spired cathedral in all of England. Now, it wasn't the cathedral or the three spires, although I am an amateur photographer and spires are one of my hobbies to take uh, photographs of. But I didn't take this for that purpose. It's not too good, but I think we might see a little bit. You have it turned to semi. It's shifting now. Right. The next picture. Look on the top and see if that little dial's on semi.
keep going. These are all in the circle. And here you see St. Francis praying. The pilgrimage to Egypt. The flight to Egypt. All right, then stop. Turn it off. <laughs> now, probably the next big change that affected nursing was the long about the uh, old, what well, was about the 11th century, the middle of the 11th century, the papacy reached its peak. And then, as you remember, uh, we had the Reformation. We had a peak where the cloisters, the monasteries, were uh, developing nursing. Then with the Reformation and the closing of some monasteries, the change in the complexity of hospitals, etc., um, hospitals began to be built by secular orders. However, the municipalities of the world were not too much interested in the health and welfare of people. And so these rose very slowly. And we had a period of time of Sarah Gant. And this is my favorite period in history. And it's the period that I have uh, tried to collect rare books, pottery, pictures, etc., that would portray this period. It's a fascinating period in history. And the next pictures on the slide show the birthplace of Florence Nightingale, who had much to do with the rise of nursing after the sudden decline during the Reformation. Would you turn them on? And I'm skipping over this very early because I know you're tired. This is the birthplace of, uh, oh, you missed it. That was the birthplace of Florence Nightingale. If you can turn it back, I doubt that you can. No, let it go the next one. Uh, I'm jumping over to England now, and this is the memorial to Florence Nightingale in the city of London. You remember Florence Nightingale was born when she died in 1910 and founded her school of nursing in 1860. <coughs> Let's go on a little bit with these. <coughs> this is St. Thomas Hospital in London, and it's very interesting how the taxi men in London identify reached out the next man and said it to St. Thomas, who never had seen it before. We didn't know how large. We had some idea. And he said, well, do you want to go to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday? And we kind of shook our head, and we said, what do you mean? He said, well, there are seven wings, and each one is named, unofficially, the days of the week. So we said, well, we wanted to go to the administration building, so he took us to the central building. Okay. Press the button. This is the central administration building. Now, this is a hospital that Florence Nightingale did not work in. Uh, and actually, she never set foot in it as an educator of nurses. She directed all of the school's activity from her apartment. And Mrs. Wardroper was her matron of nursing. All right? This was the only wing of St. Thomas that was bombed out during World War II. <coughs> and this was the Florence Nightingale Foundation wing. You remember that when Florence went to the Crimea and returned, she had become an idol to the people. She tried to, and actually did, literally sneak back into uh, England and disappeared and was not seen too much after that. 
except by those who went to her doorstep. But these soldiers and the populace of Great Britain gave their money, the rich and the poor, the soldier, the widow, gave money to accept, to give Florence a gift. And the only way that Florence accepted it was that it be used to endow a school. And she didn't get around for quite some time after the end of Crimea to establish in her school. But that money set up a foundation which is still educating the nurses at the St. Thomas Hospital School of Nursing for their first year. Uh, when I was there, the students were housed in Ponce Hut because this building was bombed out. All right. As I indicated to you, if you want to know nursing, you've got to look at its past, its present, and its future. Where have we been? Where are we? And why are we where we are? And where are we going? We only get this from history. And you can read history from primitive times until today. And you will find that there were largely three factors that affected the development of nursing. One was the religious, one was the military, and one was the emancipation of women. These three things throughout all of history other than the great craving to be of service to humanity have molded and shaped history. Wars have had a terrific impact on history, all the way from the Crusades on up to our present Cold War. World War I saw its nurse hero, Edith Cavell was one, and this is the spot upon which Edith Cavell was shot. Next one. These are taken in Belgium. She was a Belgian nurse. This hospital in Belgium, in Brussels, is the Edith Cavell Memorial Hospital. This is the hospital of which Mademoiselle uh, Bahay was president of the International Congress of Nurses the year that I was in Rome. That was the year she went out of office. But she was the director of nurses in this hospital, and this hospital is a memorial to Edith Cavell. All right? Okay. Nurses have not gone without glory. And in some of the history books, you will find in the back of them many memorials that have been made in recognition of the service that nurses have given. Uh, this particular window is the Battle of Britain, which is in Westminster Abbey. This window was given in honor of all the people who fell in World War II. And the next picture is very close to the window and part of the sequence of the memorial. And this is the nurses' memorial in Westminster Abbey. Go ahead. This is modern history, and I just threw it in to give you a little American history. Uh, this is the oldest woman medical college in the United States. They have one of the oldest, but not the oldest, school of nursing outside of the first three Nightingale schools. One more picture, I believe. I put this in. This is Dr. Kitty McFar of Tapper, we call it Kitty McFarland, who did the first intensive five-year survey of patients recovering from cancer. She had much to do with the initial work on cancer detection. And of course, she was trained and a physician at the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania. Go ahead. 
United Nations itself over in the corner along the East River in New York. You can turn it off now. No, there's one more. No, turn it off. And maybe we have light. Um, I always tell my students that nursing is my vocation, but history of nursing is my avocation. And within my avocation, there are rich avenues for fulfillment. I have learned to appreciate very much rare books, particularly of the Florence Nightingale period. The things that happen in our society that are reproduced in our art, painting, literature, are the things that become classics of all time. Why did Dickens write about Sherry Gant, whose mug I have down there, and Mr. Pickwick? Why did he do this? Was it just fun? Because his stories are delightful. No. Would the great men and women of our time have produced it or lasting are evidences of the history of that particular time. Nothing ever makes me want to be a better nurse more than is to go back to Dickens' portrayal of Sherry Gant. I asked a student the other day, she said something about Sherry Gant, and I said, who was she? Oh, I don't know, she's somebody I learned about in history nursing. What did you learn about her? Well, I don't know, I, I just knew that she lived before Florence Nightingale. How tragic this is. The 19th century, <coughs> in the 18th century, when nursing took its deepest slump from primitive times, Dickens portrayed this for all time as an example to every nurse who ever existed to move away from as far as she can move. Ella Shayer has said some time ago that nursing is a social force and that it should act upon society just as other social forces act upon nursing. But for generations, we have done nothing but let society force against nursing. When are we as nurses going to exert our force so that four, five, six generations from now, Nurses will rise up and say, wasn't it a great century? Florence Nightingale was 100 years beyond her time. She founded the school in 1860 and laid down four basic administrative principles for schools of nursing. At the 1950 mid-century report, which is up here on the rack, only 25% of the schools in our country anywhere near met these criteria. And it was only in 1949 and to 59 when the League took a concerted action and the ANA supported this action for school improvement programs did we rise up and do something about it. And even by 1960, yes, 1960, only Something like 68% of our schools were fully accredited. To our future generations call our century blessed as we now look at Florence's century and give thanks that she lived and had a vision beyond her time. Florence didn't have radio and TV. Do you know what she did? She wrote a book and paid the publisher. She was smart enough to go out and get advertisements to underwrite it. And I'm fortunate enough to have an original copy. Nothing gives me a greater pleasure than to have contact with those things
things of the past that have made our present better. And even those things of the past that were not good that give me an appreciation of how we might make the future better. This is the purpose for learning the history of medicine. But how many students, like the little girl who knew there was a Sherry Damp, that she lived before flossed it, and she wasn't a very good example, but that is all. But Sherry Damp typifies society of that day, and particularly nursing of that day, and it wasn't a very pretty picture. History can be delightful. It can help open up avenues for new friendships, new collections, new interests. And when your friends and your relatives know your interests, there's no end of the items, gifts, displaying your specific interests that flows in from all parts of the world. So I'm happy that my avocation is nursing history. It brings great pleasure. The vocation of nursing enriches my avocation, and my avocation enriches my vocation. Thank you.
We had 59 to start with. We had 59 with. at the first camp. We had 59 at the first camp. But 15 from uh, Anna's age section and 16 from USCC. General duty was three. None from occupational health. This was the conclusion of the January meeting, January the 9th, 1964. Thank you. 
could part around. If anyone didn't see it, did you keep a, a, this in a second? I thought Thank you'd you. get more. Well, well let's mm -hmm. send this this way. And I, I believe you people were late comers uh, from the time it was out. I thought if you looked over the register uh, report that you would, uh, you have one down there that you've looked at? Okay. <coughs> December 31st, 1963, the asset cash general fund $3,343.17, Mercia Service Fund savings account $3,561, office change fund $25,3,403.78, U.S. saving bonds of cost cash value $1,400. $92.12. Office furniture and fixtures, note one, total assessments, $1,094.65. Five thousand, the total is $5,669.18. Liabilities is, this is this page. Uh, unremitted payroll taxes, $168.53, dues to the Georgia State Medical Association, $3,459. The next is this case. December the 31st, 1963, $2,041.55, and the total of balances, $5,669.18. This statement was prepared on the cash basis of the accounting, office furniture and fixtures are paid to cost, with no allowance being made for the situation. Now this first time I looked at this one, I didn't know that I was in my line. Income dues, no, three, 30, 35, $181.50. Subscription to American Journal of Nursing, 216. Miscellaneous, 224.43. Total, 3500 of uh, $35,621.93. Expenditures, Georgia State Nurses Association, 24000 $354.75, salaries $5,095.55, flowers $95.49, rent $762, American Journal of Nursing subscription $182.50, telephone $680.91, stationery $538.14, postage, mailing, and miscellaneous expenses, $1,004.94, legal and office, $325, gifts and awards, $109.61, section expenses, $201.90. District meter expenses, $770.34. Convention, $690. Insurance, $97.04. Payroll and property tax, $216.80. Office supplies and expenses, $1,648.53. $36,773.50, except of expenses over income, $1,151.57. And then the found, December 31st, 1962, 
$3,192.12. Less, less excessive expenses over income as above, $1,151.57. Balance December the 31st, 1963, $2,041.55. Dues are reported, this is a note, dues are reported as income is collected. The dues are $35,181.50. The above includes $30,143.75, $1,962 dues, and $5,037.75, $1,964 dues collected in 1963. Of the 1964 dues collected, $3,459 is included as expenditures to the Georgia State Nation Association of the Fall. Exhibit B. Everyone have an opportunity to, to glance over this. Is there any discussion of the audit of the register? That one is there. This is your mm -hmm. Those in favor, please say aye.
Brown's people with the fifth district being the only main case on that. And I called the lawyer to find out what technicalities involved, and he said we may go ahead and adopt the field officially. We'd like to have it for the record for that. And that it would be the thing that would be legal and binding on any of our forms or papers that we should have it. Would someone like to make a motion just so we have that on the minutes that we need? Yes, it is. It comes in on the printing matter there, but it didn't say adopt it officially for the fifth district. Well, what it says is that it's adopted by the fifth district. Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Mason salary. Rent, $125. <coughs> Telephone and advertising, $63.55. Heavy cash, notebooks and postage, $25. The R <coughs> RM, LCM, and LUM cards and envelopes, $36.57. District meter <coughs> quarterly taxes, $505.87. Employers annual federal unemployment, $114.43. State of Georgia quarterly income, $39.51. Employment. This is a recording of the meeting of the regular session, 5th District, Georgia State Nurses, St. Joseph's Infirmary, 4.30, January 9th. January dues paid by the RM 100, by the licensed practical nurse 24, and by the undergraduate 4. That was for January. Um, this is the February report. Bounce forward February the 1st, 1964, $3,808.23. Income from the membership dues and bill heads, $2,687.20. And disbursement salaries, $1,319.61. Rent, $125. Telephone and advertising, $48.55. Individual and his life system posting sheet, $11.64. Total $1,504.80. Clear in the bank, breeze with statement, $4,990.63. Now, dues today from the graduates. I think this is 182. But it's blotted, so it's hard to make out. But I'm sure that it's eight, uh, 80 p during the uh, month of February. And then the practical nurses, 51, and the uh, undergraduate six. And that's the report for the rest. Mm -hmm. January and February reports complaints on Thank you. 
146 is not an appropriation bill. That was a resolution to change the Constitution, and it was passed. But there's been no appropriation passed. That's quite a difference there. I don't know whether you want to leave it in, leave it to stand as it is. You can't change a committee's report, but uh, and this, uh, there's certainly been no appropriation bill passed. But there was this is, uh, S. Bill number 146 is the uh, um, uh, resolution to change the Constitution, which will come to vote before the people in September, I mean in November. And um, then um, the bill that was finally passed, Senate Bill number 190, that which was, fi which was passed, uh, gave them very broad sweeping powers and instead of listing dentistry, social work, nursing, and pharmacy, um, the powers, the um, bill authorized that there be scholarship, a scholarship commission established which would make grants to for education, for um, professions, 
and for education um, and par and paramedical education. They, they listed three things instead of all those because we had trouble when this bill went to the Senate and went to the House. Everybody wanted to get on the bandwagon and get money, and we would have lost the bill. Let me say this: this bill would have been lost had it not been for Mr. Ham Mr. George Hamilton. Now he just went right into that conference table and contended with the gentleman on the committee, and we were right there when he did it. And the, and he was a person and having the prestige that he had and the standing in the state that he had to listen to him. But any lesser person could not have, <coughs> had, that we would not have had a thing without Mr. <coughs> Hamilton. And I'm going to give him the full credit for what he's done. And he rewrote it. He rewrote it. And um, it was not passed as in this present form. However, that's uh, purely academic to contend about that first, but now this other, as the matter of appropriation, that possibly should, uh, there should be something done about that because the appropriation was not made yet and cannot made, be made until January of 65. Dentistry and social work as well as the result of in the bill of 1963 that was paid, but nursing was in that bill, wasn't That's right. Yeah. So then the, the the new bill, which uh, the new bill which was passed, just gives them broad sweeping powers and said all paramedical education, which would include anybody that the commission decided to give scholarships for education of those persons in in the uh, medical field, except the doctors. That the doctors are eliminated. For a point of information, though, Mr. Hamilton says we should give you a lot of credit. So we do. Well, <laughs> we nurses do. I appreciate that, uh, Miss Holland. But actually, I know, mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. what turned the yeah, I turned the current mm -hmm. on. It was Mr. Hamilton, mm -hmm. and I'm giving him the credit where the credit belongs. Mm -hmm. Of course, we did what we could, but it, we would have been just like so many bystanders around there if we had not have had a man of his prestige and standing to come to our side. Because they, this thing was dead. That man, Mr. Wilkes, he just had this thing, he just had this thing um, killed. Oh, by the way, I will mention that he did get, <laughs> Miss Hammond had trade with him a little bit. But it wasn't a bad, I mean, it didn't hurt our cause any. And um, Mr. Wilkes wanted a bill passed which would set up a, an incorporation to make loans for any boy or girl in the state of Georgia who wished to go on and finish their college education on a guaranteed basis, a repayment guarantee. And uh, that's what he tried to sidetrack this bill with. And Mr. Hamilton told him, says, you go ahead and I'll help you with yours if you'll help me with mine. And Mr. Wilkes helped him. And he helped Mr. Wilkes, so they both got passed. And there's just money everywhere for education, so everybody ought to get on, get in the act. Mr. Hamilton, did you think we should make a... Well, it's certain there's no appropriation bill. That's the only thing. If you want to read it, there's no point. In, I mean, there's no objection to reading it, but I, somebody might question it. Mm -hmm. And it's sure not an appropriation bill. Well, because we have to give a report. Yeah, I am talking. I couldn't. Well, I well, this is it. a very good report. It's a very excellent report. Mm -hmm. And there was an appropriation bill, but that bill didn't get out it didn't get off the ground because the, in the first place we had to get these other two moving before we could get the appropriation. So, oh, I guess it's, I, I tell you, just read it like it is. And then if anybody questions it, we can 
uh, explain it. But for the matter of minutes, mm -hmm. then I would suggest that Mr. Hitchfield be contacted mm -hmm. and requested to make that change because it is not an appropriation bill. My presence, I'd like to say to urge everybody to register so they can go and vote for this this fall in November. That's right. We're going to have to get a lot of votes. A referendum vote. That's right. It's a referendum vote. And unless it's passed by the people of Georgia, we won't get it. But I'd rather just think we are getting it. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. May we have a report of membership credentials, Ms. Moskvay? Yes. Um, we had a meeting the 16th of February, and uh, approved 12 members and deferred one and uh, since that time though she did not she didn't get registered in the state of georgia and her dues have been refunded to her and she's out of the state so we won't have that problem and now we have 24 applications to be approved and 14 of those that were just received monday or tuesday of this week and we plan to have a meeting uh, possibly Tuesday. And what is the membership? Uh, here it is, and um, it's uh, 652 with six associates, and that is 48 members, a decrease of 48 members as compared with 1963. 652 with six associates. And they approved just one and deferred one. Proof 12 and deferred one. 48 less than March. Yes. But if we approve these new applications, if we get their references in, that will be 24 more. The next report after this time last year was on the 14th, I believe, and they had 683. We want to catch up and pass it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Do we have a report for nominations? Public relations, you haven't been to We haven't even seen the newspaper. Uh, we're saving that for nurse week. We go all out then, but some of the sections have. I think you'd be interested in that this is from the occupational health section, and they got a list of all of the um, places that have them. Nurses and want me to help them and send them out trying to recruit membership and also some of the doctor's offices they included. And then we got this from ANAU. If you haven't seen the new poster, we got 200 of those that we'll be sending out to you very soon. This is real good. It says become a, become a member of the occupational health section of the Georgia State Nurses Association today. We need your you and your support. And then it's treasures dream down here. I fell asleep the other night, and while I had my snooze, I dreamed each mem member stepped right up and promptly paid her dues. <laughs> but when I found it was but a dream, I nearly threw a fit. It's up to you to make it true. Suggestions, please remit. <laughs> that's, that's from the occupational health. <laughs> Is it all right for me to tell them what AMA did about the membership thing is going to be included in the bylaws for next year for the new graduates? How about you, Sissy, on the membership committee? Well, I just got word on I happen to be on the committee, and they approved in January all the recommendations by the committee, and all the newly licensed nurses will be given the advantage of one full year on half-year membership. That's one of the things that they plan to do. And the reason they can't make mandatory uh, membership is because it's unlawful. No other profession in all the world except the law profession is allowed to do it. And of course, they're going to make some clarification on that. Um, so you say it's your membership for women? New ladies, they have that. Well, you just have it for the rest of the year, but they're going to give them the full, all their time and one more full year to get them started off. And they were working on continuous membership and recognition but they didn't get that through and they postponed the meeting from the 31st. I just had time to read it today. It's going to be the due on the 31st of March, but it'll be in October because they need a new director. And instead of the regional membership or workshops, 
So have national. Report of special committees. Careers, Miss Mallory. of the registry met on March the 3rd, 1964 at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom at St. Joseph Infirmary. The roll call, Ms. Gladys Gollum, President, Sister Mary Christine, and Lisa Mays, Chairman. Mrs. Emily Serbs, Chairman of the Private Duty Section, 5th District, GSNA, and Mrs. Ina Hooker, Director of the Registry's 5th District, and the Executive Secretary, Ms. Atkins, were present by invitation. Ms. Mace gave a review of the audit report of the Nurses Professional Register for 1963. The Chairman announced that Ms. Graves had requested a meeting <coughs> with the study committee for the purpose of being or helping to work out problems of filling calls for critically ill and difficult cases. Sister Christine stated that having the hospitals having their own registers were Georgia Baptist, South Fulton, DeKalb, and Piedmont. Those supporting the central register include St. Joseph, Crawford Long, Emory University, and Grady Hospital. Mrs. Hooker gave a, a report of the hospital's status in regards to the call. General discussion followed and a questionnaire was proposed 
to survey the private duty nurses on the register in regards to the restrictions and requirements. A letter from the Undergraduate Nurses Association was considered. The following recommendations were made. The bill has be sold only to members in good standing of the nurses professional register, not to be transferable by individuals to non-members. Two, that all bill heads, printed forms, and other printed matters go through the printing committee and bear the fifth district seal. That three, that educational programs be encouraged and workshops be sponsored by the hospital to provide improving, improved nursing care of their specialty. That a ratio of fees for private duty nurses for the licensed practical nurses and the undergraduate nurses be continued unchanged. The practical, the registered practical nurse, three fourths of the RN, and the undergraduate, three fourths of the RN plus 50 cents. That a meeting with Miss Graves and the interested group be arranged. Adjourned at three, two thirds. Now going back to the this uh, question of. Uh, a question there to the private duty nurses was one thing that Sister Christine and I had talked about by working out something and bringing it to the board or either sending out a list to the members for you to, to study and then to bring back to the board before it goes to the private duty nurses is for them to give have a list of uh, things that just asking questions of them uh, first what hospital did they prefer to have calls to and that would maybe be number one and then number two uh, what cases uh, did they object to being called for and several questions like that and then getting the uh, getting their approval or their thinking of this questionnaire with the signatures and if the register had something like that it would save a great deal of time instead of them going down the list calling and refusing and refusing and refusing they could have it tabulated and have it where they could see it and place the call to the person that is available uh, for that particular case there's where uh, so much discussion at the present time is coming from is nurses refusing to take hard cases, refusing to take this and refusing to take that off when they get to the hospital saying, well, they didn't know anything about it. But we do feel that it's, if the hospital with their specialty would give courses that the nurses could go, the ones that are interested in that work, I, I believe we could gain a great deal. That was it thinking of it. Uh, Sister Christine and I, and we just wanted to put it up to you people to see what you think before we start working on anything, because there's no need of us wasting our time if it's not going to be approved after we spend a great deal of time. But I would want the board, before anything went out, I would want the approval of the board of the questionnaire, and after we had our thinking, then for you people to make any correction or to add to, and then we would take it and work it over and bring it to the board for approval. Well, one thing that might be of help would be for the registry to get more information on the patient before she calls that private duty nurse. Well, sometimes th th that that's true too, and we could uh, add, add the, that the in hospital. Too. Uh, the calling system, I mean, from the hospital is where it's messed up, in my opinion, and I nurse at all the hospitals. That they do not give enough information when they uh, place the call. That's right. And that's then right. one person places it, and that person places it, and you never know. You go on the case, and sometimes when you get that, it's supposed to be for one doctor, and why that doctor's just been called in. And it's not even that doctor's case. Well, that's a good point, but I think we would have to notice, notify the hospital that they would be just a little more explicit with their placing of a call. 
wonder if there could be some um, more paperwork again, but if the hospital should have some kind of little form that they fill out or have the families fill out or something to request private teaching nurses uh, to go down to the office and then you, it's like the game of gossip. So many times when something's told four or five times, it's not the same. And that's what happens sometimes. It's written down. Well, I think a number of years ago, uh, it's rather vague by mind at the present time, but patients, that is, the family, whoever the family that were asking for a private duty nurse or if it was a doctor, a slip had to be signed before a private duty nurse was called. We used to do that in Crawford Law. Well, it, it was at one time. Mm -hmm. That was a rule. I know. I know. Um, and that, uh, I don't know when it fell by the wayside or anything like that, but it has been. Well, instead of sending out questionnaires, my suggestion would be to get you a group of private duty nurses that <coughs> nurses in most all hospitals, nurse mo most all patients and all doctor cases, and let them talk to you. And they can give you a lot of information. Well, I know that um, when I joined the registry, they uh, uh, asked me the preference. Mm -hmm. Did you give uh, two hospitals mm -hmm. right. where you would like to work? That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's on file down there, I believe. Yeah. And then... Uh, well, some... Uh, yes, it uh, has been. But you and see, then there's some that are gone, and there's new ones in that has never... And then they asked, uh, what cases that. would you object to That's right. That's right. But if we get something no new, well, with all, only 180 that have paid their dues, they shouldn't have but 180 in their file this year. Well, so they, 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 they don't have 80, 182, I think it is. But the, the thing is, if we had something... Say they ought to bring their card up today. But if we had something new, though, uh, something up to date in the... Because people change their minds, their health or changes in their family life and things like that change their uh, like a flip chart and that's uh, right and if you had something the hospitals that that's right if you had something new uh to for the registrars to go by i believe uh eventually that we could work out something that would be uh efficient uh miss mace while we're on the subject of calls uh i wonder if it wouldn't be a good time to do away with the individual list and when people register in, now this is this is the thing that's caused all the friction mm -hmm. in the private inspection. All the mess that's been going on for about 15 years, this is it. 25. Well, 50. <laughs> uh, if that individual list were destroyed, <coughs> and when a nurse mm -hmm. registers in, if she wants to work at Emory and work at Eggson, put her on both lists. Don't mm -hmm. register by alumni, but by hospitals, because we have so many hospitals now. Maybe the others will come back. Uh, and just do away with that list entirely. I'm uh, I do think, too, that this would stop so much, um, uh, so many calls uh, into the registry by nurses who don't understand procedure, who just literally ball the uh, registrars out because of some of the, this sort of thing and other reasons it would stop some of that. And I do think a rule should be put in there to suspend nurses who unnecessarily do that sort of thing because the registrars have a busy time. They don't have time for that. And the slander and so forth that they get, there's no excuse for it. And if girls can't be ladies, uh, then they should be suspended. And any complaints they have, they should be reminded that they should come to the registry committee or the study committee until we have a registry committee again. I think all of these things ought to be cleared up. Uh, Sister Christine, can you add to or take off of what I've just said? No, I think you did great. <laughs> before we called the meeting, and then it was uh, widely discussed, Ms. Dirks uh, knows, and we want to include uh, Ms. Dirks and Mrs. Hooker uh, to the meetings because we feel they can be a great help 
uh, to the committee until we can get things organized. But I, I firmly feel that if we could send out something, now I'm not saying I'm the one to get it ready, but I will be glad to help, but just to get some things listed and then send a copy to every one of the board members for you to strike out or add to or, or correct or improve. And then we would get it uh, copied again and bring it to the board meeting for, you know, to know if, if it was what we wanted before it was mailed. The expense was uh, of mailing. And get something new. I would like to move that, uh, that this sort of questionnaire be devised by the study group and the people that they feel can, can assist them in. And that it be She's making the motion. I, I was just explaining what. Well, she I didn't get the motion. Happy to She's right. She just She's right. the same thing uh -huh. that I have just said. But it'll come to you people uh, for you to study before the next meeting, so it can be, and then be sent back so that it can be put into form to bring to the meeting for voting. Well, at our private duty meeting where we have the private duty nurses there. Uh, the discussion is that we should have our uh, registered committee back and let us work on our things and come bring them to the board. But we're planning on giving it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, leave it alone. Uh, but we, uh, we do want to feel that we've accomplished something and I feel that we must do uh, I'll do something yeah. to get something Remember concrete, but we want the help of the board, and you people can ask it, get anything cleared that you want to by asking, but I think if you stop and, and think yourself, you'll be able to add to, to help. Too many people can't uh, fix up a, any one form. It takes just a few people. And we feel if we can get an outline and then for you people to correct it, add to or take off, and then we would uh, get it ready for the approval of the board before it was mailed. This register committee, though, is set up not for the private duty section, but for the, um, for the carrying on the work of the executive board through the register. Well, we and used to have them. Um, Report and, and uh, at our private duty meetings, we passed on a lot of things and got reports from it and worked with it too. Mm -hmm. Well, Miss Bryant, you're writing this motion. Is it your wish that we act on these recommendations here, Miss Lane? Do you have to? Can we have a discussion on that? Yes, I it's, it's the now. All right. I'm on deal with a patient that I took out to Piedmont that I've nursed in the family. This is the eighth time. And we're at Piedmont now, and the afternoon nurse does not have any new bill heads. And they have insurance, and they want new bill heads when I give mine. So I've been using mine for her. Well, you can't well, do it. You can't do it. 
That's no, what all the feed mart nurses support. come support the registry. They don't support the registry and, and was just. Well, I have to because I'm in feed mart. Well, well, you, 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 you just nurse. can't hear her. Oh. I can't tell him to find that nurse because no, she you can't tell him to find that nurse. Let her get head. her own uh, bill head. Oh, well, she can write the woman is paying me, and yep. she asked me. Well, tell her you can't let her. So, so just, just tell them that, uh, uh, that you can't do it. Which you don't do to me if I do it. But if a few that puts you on the list. No, it doesn't either. It just puts you above the other. When I did private duty down there, we couldn't transfer. You mean you just paid you because you're in Piedmont Hospital? No. It puts you above the others because you are in good standing. You are in good standing. Yes, but you give her your bill to the other nurse, give her bill to her too. Yeah, but she wants the same kind of bill head for her insurance mm -hmm. purposes. Well, she yeah. don't have the same kind of bill head from now, Sandra Dockett. This Dockers is eight does. times I've nursed in this family, and I'm just telling you now, I'll give her a bill head as long as I'm going to do it with oh, the state. Well, that's, well, that's tragic. Well, you defeat your purpose, man. You defeat your purpose. Well, it's bill. So, so I, but I can't make that nurse go down and get her bill head. I can ah, make her pay sure. no yeah, more than you can, can make nurses in your section pay. You can't make oh. her, but you don't have to give her yours. So May yeah. I? Yeah. May no, I you're wrong. I wish you were you're wrong. absolutely wrong. Well, I think that's defeating the purpose. It is oh. defeating it. You, you just put yourself on a higher level. Excuse me, Mr. Tucker. That's all right. Legally. A bill written out by this nurse in her own handwriting, giving her license, no, uh, giving her a registration number, is a legal document mm -hmm. and cannot be turned down by anybody. Mm -hmm. She does not have to have any bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But your insurance company, if she puts her registration yes. down yes. there, that insurance company will have to pay it. To take it. And uh, they'll have to take it because I happen to know about that. They've always taken them before yeah. these were printed. Well, what are the rest of the Piedmont nurses do when the insurance yeah. comes yeah. up? What do they I don't do? know what to do. I, know, I don't no, know uh, if it's, uh, if it's a if it's the fifth district bill head, then only a member of the fifth district should mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, now, <clears throat> I think the patient. You could explain to the patient that <coughs> if this is written out even in her handwriting with her registration number, it is a legal tender. All I did was the woman said that girl didn't have her new bill head. She asked me if she could borrow for the other girl. And I said, you're not supposed to do it unless she's a member of the registry. But when this man was suffering the tortures of the dam and we could not get nurses for him, well, you they were kind enough to come and you help us to, out to nurse to. that man. And still... <coughs> My my position on that is, uh, what am I supposed to do? That's what well, I say. Unless you well, you them. you this was your patient, and you had to act in your best judgment yes. for that patient. And my best judgment, and I don't right think anybody can let, question that. that but that I think this lady that she has, I give them to the woman. I didn't give them to the nurse. Uh, and, and I do know there are times. And with a critical mm -hmm. patient that mm -hmm. even uh, so my question is, what are, what are we going to do to the nurses that him do him let out very unfavorable uh, do let out this because bill heads without them paying because in hospitals that are not I tell that, you that are you. not uh, members there will things like this come up because it's already come up with me. And at other hospitals, it might do it that are not participating. Because I go to the cab, and I go to staff, Fulton, and I go to all of them. That's just supporting Miss Garen, though, in uh, her wrongdoings. And it is wrong for Miss Garen to have nurses that do not belong to the district, are uh, not state members, and things like that. So why can't they have their own bill heads if they, they don't want to? They can. They can have them printed. That's what I was suggesting. They can have them printed the with their registration number. Have on. your All own bill heads. go down to the printer and print them up some bills with their name at the top and, and the charges know. and <laughs> registration <laughs> right. and that's all they have to do. I don't think that's fair. Mm -hmm. The question there. came up, what you going to do? This is it. Just on stationary. Well, back in the old days, 
fixed it many years ago. When I did private tutoring, the individual hospital okay. used to uh, have them, uh, I mean, and you could get them from the hospital where you uh, a package of pill had. Well, you just write out a bill and give it to them and for professional services rendered and sign her name and registration number and the court would make the insurance company pay it. Well, that's all we did when I did private duty about 200 years ago. <laughs> Are you ready to put on the next bill here? There is in favor then of uh, the first recommendation that Bill Hayes be sold only to members in good standing of the Nurses Professional Registry, not to be transferred by individuals to non-members. Please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Madam Chairman, it's entering you in order now. It's not ours. Well, we were acting on the recommendations of the committee.
Enforcement is that the ratio of fees for private duty nursing for the licensed practical nurses and the undergraduate nurses be continued unchanged. That is the LPN three fourths of the registered nurse, uh, licensed undergraduate three fourths of the registered nurse plus six percent. because mm -hmm. ANA recommended it. We mm -hmm. cannot actually no. set it. No, no, no. it uh, comes from their national headquarters on down. Mm -hmm. It's and a it's NAPNI, NAPNI that's recommending that. It all the Federation, the National yeah. Federation of Practical Nurses. I don't think ANA has ever recommended that. <laughs> they have no right to say anything about what uh, somebody else does about the salary. ANA doesn't do that. But uh, what they do is they have to have an annual meeting and they have to have the national federation has recommended that and so has the National Association of Practical Nurse Education and Services. Well, you've got it in your rules, you approved it, and the rules before these were printed too. It's on page 11 here that the Federation of Medical Nurses Federation has approved it. Yeah. And it is on page 11 that the Federation has approved it. Yeah. 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 Ye
your prompt consider, uh, cooperation in compliance will be greatly appreciated. Eunice Nolan Pearson uh, and Margaret Lovell is registered committee chair. That's 5th District. 5th District. Fifth District. Fifth District. Fifth District. Fifth District. attention to the licensing of these undergraduate nurses and they are not licensed if they were turned out of a school I can tell They're you not. that. No, well then that's new. Well it's that's the rule it's been it set has, up. It has if been. they were expelled from a school they are not licensed. Now if it, they had to drop out for past. disaster or illness or lack of finances or some justifiable cause and that's verified with the director of the school. Well, it and may be it may be now, Miss Hudson, in back yeah. in the past. It well, was that's uh, the they board can not set up those regulations, and they have set them up, and they are following through on it very carefully. Well, and, and none of these people, in fact, to the business, is very few of them are licensed. Very few of them. And are that's as it should come? be. I think. Yeah. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. 
to have sent a letter to them yes. Uh, yes. notifying that the notified. board has Is it any way that they can eliminate these?